head with noble tidings to Mary, and, and she is conceived by the Holy Ghost. Now may it progress, the Lord is with thee, blessed are all among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done, done unto me according to thy word. Now may it progress, the Lord is with thee, blessed are all among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother, Mother of God, pray, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh and, and dwelt among us. Now may it for grace the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that, that we, we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. All forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion may we come to know the glory of his resurrection, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In nome di Patris e Filii e Spiritus Sancti, Amen. In tua volatari Dei, ed in cui li difficati, in tu tu mei. Io ritam a Dei, se ti sono tanto, ma in gente non sancta, ma non mi rendo quando lo assorto, Amen. Quei tuus Deus, scotti tu lo mai, quando vi è felici, quando vi è felici, non c'è il mio figlio, Amen. Come de luce in tua verità, tu tu mi sono de luce, non ti luce, non ti monti un sancto, un dove, e ti dava la cola tua. E ti in tua volatari Dei, ed in cui li difficati, in tu tu mei. Come te muti mi incitere a Deus, Deus meus, quel tu istane mamma, la quale con tuo pas me. Spere in Deo, quando vai sopra te, voi li salutare con tu sme e Deus meus. Gloria a Patria, il Figlio e il Spirito e il Santo, si poderà tu principio e dunque sempre, e in secola seculorum. Amen. In tuoi volontari dei, ed in cui li tifica di un tutto meo. Auditori nostri, in nome di Domini, qui feci c'è in metà. Confitio da mi potenti via Maria Tellide, via Tentale Tempo, via tua anima Cristo, Santi Posti di Fede, via tua anima Maria Tiani, un tu Santi Dori Fratelli, qui ho da venire in questa generazione, bevo e popolo, me ho culpa, me ho culpa, me ho massima culpa. E io prego, beata Maria Ante Vigile, beat mi fai il macangelo, beat mi vuole Battista, un santo tu posso spettro il tuo, beat mi vuole Maria Tiani, un santo tu posso fratelli, corrare con me, dove non dai nostro. Es de alto tu ilu potens de Jesus, disfrutati su esfruta te vita me terra. Amen. Confitio Dei Omnipotenti, Viate Maria Sempre Vigini, Viate Michali Arcangelo, Viate Ioanni Battiste, Santi Saposto di Spetro e Paolo, Omnibus Santi Sentificate, Qui è il Gavini in Scorsazione Vengo e Dovre. Meo culpa, meo culpa, Mea massima culpa. E io prego, beata, Mariam sempre virginem, beata me caia in un arcangelo, beata mi vai in battista, santo se posso lo specchio del Paolo, onne santo se te fate, orare per me, a dominum del nostro. Miseriato vesci mi potenza Deus, e mi sfruttati vesci, e mi giunta quasi vita me tarà. Amen. Nu gene siamo a sussione, ma tre missioni, ma tu torni a suore, te giù e noi mi sono di potente misericordiosi. Amen. Deus te converso per vivere a visnos, e in prezzo e le tabito in te, o se ne nomi stormi e misericordia al tuo, e in salutare il tuo genetis, domine e grado la azione mea, e in clamo meo sette venia, tu domi lo suo viscum, e con spirito tuo, orre. Salve, Sancte Parins, in ex ora pro e per regum, qui celum tarlan quel regit in secula seculorum, ed ottavi per me in verbum bonum, digo ego opera da mea regi. Gloria, Padre e Figlio e Spirito e Santo, si poterà di principio e non che sempre, ed in secula seculorum. Amen. Salve, Sancte Parins, in ex ora pro e per regum, qui celum tarlan quel regit in secula seculorum. Chiria e Aissa, Kyrie Eleison, 
Gloria in excelsis Deo. Et in terra pax omnibus voli voluntatis. Adamus te benedicimus te adoramus te glorificamus te. Grazie da Gesù vi prolotte mano gloria a tua. Domine Deus rex celestis Deus patero di potenza. Domine figu di genite Gesù Christe. Domine Deus augus te i figus patris. Qui tolle peccato mundi misedere nobis, qui tolle peccato mundi suscite de peccazione nostra. Chi sede se destra in patris misedere nobis. Voniam tu solus sanctus, tu solus dominus, tu solus saltissimus, Iesu Christe, con sancto spirito e gloria dei patris. Amen. Ex vobis. Et cum Spiritu Tuo, orremus. Concede nos famulus Tuus Caes, Mus Domine Deus, Perpetua Menti de Corpore Sanitati Gaudere, E Gloriose Beate Marie, E Sempre Regini, Senta Cessiane, E Presenzi Liberali Tristizia, Et Eterne Perfru Letizia. Per Domino Nostrum, Iesum Christum, Filium Tuum, Che Te Cum Vius de Regna, Cum Unitati, Spiritu Sancti Deus, Per Romnia Secula Seculorum, Amen. Orde Pus. Deus qui corda fidelium sancti spiritus illustrazioni docu visti, da nobis ed eo del spirito recte sapere, ed eo semper consolazione cadere. Ecclesia et tue caes nos domini precis peccatus amite, ut distrussis ar vesis asibus et rolibus universis et punite bis servi et levitate. Per Domino nostrum, Iesum Christum, Filium Tum, Qui te cum vivus regna non elitati spiritu sancti Deus, per la mia secula seculorum. Amen. Lex libri sapiensiae. Ab inizio et ante secula creatus sum, et usque et futurum seculum non desinam, et in habitazione sancte corne vipso ministravit, et sic in zion fimatus sum, et in civitati sanctificate se milite recreavit, et in Jerusalem potestas mea et radicavi in popolo honorificato, et in parte dei mei hereditas ilius, et in plenitudine sanctorum di tensio mea. Deo gratias. Benedicere et venerabili ses Virgo Maria, que sin et altru pudoris in venderes mate salvatoris, Virgo dei genitris, quem totus non capit orbis in tuas e clausit viscera factus homo. Alleluia, alleluia! Post partum virgo inviolate panasisti dei genitris in decede pro nobis. Alleluia. Nomino suo visco e con spirito tuo, sequenzia santi, Vangeli secundum Lucam. Gloria a te, mi Domine. In ino tempore, eloquente e ae sua turba, se solens vocem queda mulia de turba disidili. Beatus venter qui deputavit e buffa, que susisti, e ti le dixit, qui ni mobiazzi, qui audiunt verum dei, e custodium di lui. Laus, tibi Christi. On this votive mass of the of Our Lady on Saturday. The lesson is taken from the Book of Wisdom. At the beginning of time, before the world was, I was created, and to all eternity I shall not cease to be, mine to minister before him in his holy dwelling. 
So according to his word, I made Zion my stronghold, the holy city my resting place, Jerusalem my throne. My roots spread out among the people that enjoy his favour. My God has granted me a share in his own domain, where his faithful servants are gathered, I love to linger. And the Holy Gospel is the continuation of that according to St Luke. At this time, as Jesus was speaking to the crowd, a woman in the multitude said to him aloud, Blessed is the womb that bore thee, and the breast which, thou, which suckled thee. And he answered, Shall we not say, Blessed are they who hear the word of God, and keep it? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Carissimi, beloved in Christ, welcome to this broadcast Mass on this Votiva, Missa Votiva, Votive Mass of Our Lady on Saturday. Tomorrow, of course, is the Feast of Our Lady's Nativity, the birthday of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So we offer this Mass, this Votiva, to Our Lady with some joyful expectation or anticipation, we might say, of tomorrow's feast. Those of you who are regular viewers of our broadcast masses will, I'm sure, be aware that on Saturday mornings we also broadcast a live catechism, which, during the past two months, has been reflecting on vocational discernment. We began uh, that, uh, we began our reflections recognising and acknowledging that the Blessed Virgin Mary is indeed a worthy guide for us, an exemplar disciple for us, uh, in terms of vocational discernment. Why? Because she was ever open and ready uh, to discern God's will and apply herself there too. Because, as she is otherwise described, she lived in holy fear. That means to say she lived ever aware of God's presence. So perhaps it's apt that, uh, as we will again uh, reflect after Mass in our Catechism on vocational discernment, it's perhaps worth reflecting on the nature of Our Lady as an exemplar disciple for discerning God's vocation. What do we mean by living in holy fear, by living ever aware of God's presence? Well, of course, the uh, educated among you may recall that God is omnipresent. That is, that he is always and everywhere. He has always been and always will be, but that he is in all and through all, as the Apostle Paul says. How, then, uh, should we or can we be aware of God's presence? How can we be aware of God around us. See, it's very easy for us to assent to the idea, notionally. It's very easy for us to simply say, nod our heads and say, yes, indeed, God is everywhere. God is through all and in all. It's quite another to make ourselves or allow ourselves or enable ourselves to live every moment recognising this simple fact. Now, I'm not saying that we have to do anything to make God's presence uh, around us. God's, that's given. God's presence is a given around us. What we have to do is actively, forcibly, demonstrably, make ourselves be aware, be open to, receptive. This is something, then, that requires effort on our part. It means we have to strive ourselves to force ourselves to be always aware of God around us. Now there are all sorts of ways that through the ages various saints and spiritual mystics have uh, uh, suggested that we might do this and indeed in our series on vocational discernment we are uh, looking at some of the uh, spiritual exercises of such saints that indeed are designed to enable the individual to live aware of the presence of God every moment in their life, that they may discern and apply their, his will to it. We have looked at the imitation of Christ, 
by that great work by Thomas Kempis. We have looked at an introduction to the devout life by St Francis de Sales, and we will go on to look at other uh, similar spiritual exercises like those of St Ignatius of Loyola and others. But what is common and what is key to all of them is that they begin in the first instance with the fundamental principle of personal holiness, indeed of personal piety. Because it all begins within our hearts. It has to begin there. We have to have such a love for God that we desire to see and to acknowledge his presence. And here, of course, is where the problem is. Because that evil part of our natural selves does not desire to recognise nor acknowledge the ever-abiding presence of God around us. That rebellious spirit within us would much rather believe that God cannot see all that we are doing, all that we are thinking. that selfish part of ourselves that desires secrecy, that demands some kind of personal sanctuary, that no one nor anything can get into, can impede. And it is in the preservation or the pursuit or the creation of such walled-in spaces within our hearts that is contrary to the gospel message. Our Lord himself says that what is done in secret, what is said and done in secret, will be made light, will be made known, will be revealed, if not in this life, then at judgment when we come before God, when we can hide from him no more, then all that we have strived and striven to keep secret and hidden, if we have not by then confessed it, repented, and received absolution, will be exposed. And everyone will know. You may recall that in ancient times, of which the general confession in the Mass of the Faithful or uh, in the Mass of the Catechumen is the, the first part of the Mass and the, the preparation. In ancient times, the general confession was made publicly. Every member of the congregation would confess their sins publicly to the assembly. This is why we say, I confess to this, that and everything else and you, my brethren, because at one time, Christians confessed their sins openly and publicly to one another. You may recall, of course, that in uh, ancient times, or, or not quite ancient times, but earlier times, uh, in the medieval period, for example, there was the public excommunication and later reception of penitents. That is to say, those who had... Uh, confessed their sins publicly, were, uh, as it were, excommunicated temporarily from uh, the fellowship of the church at the beginning of Lent, on Ash Wednesday or on the Thursday after Ash Wednesday, and they wouldn't be received back until they had completed their penance on Maundy Thursday. If you look uh, at the old books, you will see there are rites and rituals for the excommunication and reception of public penitence. The idea being here, of course, that the children in light, the saints in light, should have nothing to fear from dark places, from hidden things or secrets. Similarly, 
in the first millennium, the church's fight against heresy, particularly chief among them Gnosticism, the idea of a hidden or secret knowledge that only a few initiates would have. Holy Mother Church roundly condemned this because the gospel speaks of truth, speaks of a truth that is for everyone, speaks of the light of truth which is for everyone, speaks of that light which is the life of men, meant for everyone. And so many of our prayers speak of radiating light into areas of darkness. When it comes, as it soon will, to Advent, we will hear those wonderful words often set to music and most beautifully so by Handel in his Messiah, that wonderful bass bar baritone solo from Isaiah. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light Meaning, of course, the chosen people of Israel, those who have seen and recognized and embraced and inherited the Messiah, see with his light. His light reaches into the furthest, darkest corners of the world and exposes sin to light, to truth, to forgiveness, to mercy, to absolution. If you ever go to St Paul's Cathedral in London, there is a wonderful, huge painting there, I think, in the South Transept, entitled Christ the Light of the World. And there is depicted our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, holding a lantern, knocking at a door. I remember I was perhaps something like 10 or 12, 10 or 11, I think, when I first saw that picture in reality. I'd seen it several times on postcards, but on a school trip to London, I saw Christ the light of the world for the first time. And it had a huge impact on me. And I still try to recall and to remember it in dark times. so that I will open the door of my heart and always allow the light of Christ to enter in. Christ, my brothers and sisters, knocks on the doors of each and every one of our hearts. And the light that he brings, though indeed it exposes sin, at the same time, it brings healing light. It brings the warmth and consolation of absolution. It radiates the reconciliation that God desires with each and every one of us. It exposes the love of God to us. And if we, my brothers and sisters, would desire to truly live in holy fear, that is to say, always aware of God, we need ourselves const constantly to heed that knocking and open that door and allow that light to come in. It's a scary thought, I know. And the wonderful consolation of the sacraments of the Church, and indeed of her now developed practice, is that you don't need to expose your sins publicly in front of everybody else. You can utilise the sacrament of confession.
so that you may know the healing power of Christ's light in your life and enable you to open your heart and take that light and share that light. Now, as we know, with the example of Our Lady, exposing one's heart to God is not always easy. Our Lord says, and this is true for every single person who would follow him, that they must take up their cross. Remember the words, the prophecy given to Our Lady by Simeon in the temple. And a sword shall pierce thine own heart also. And we might think, how can someone like Our Lady, so full of grace, so full of desire to serve God, so obedient to God's word, to God's law, living her life according to God's pattern of living. How, why should she suffer? Why should a sword pierce her heart? Because truthfully, my brothers and sisters, no love is worthy of the name of love if it is not by its very nature sacrificial. If it does not hurt to love, then it is not love. Because love requires the sacrifice of ourself. Our Lady, blessed as she was, too, suffered because of her love, because of her union with God. And we should expect no less for ourselves. And let's face it, this is often why we build that invisible wall around our hearts. That's why we shy away from the light. For fear of hurt, for fear of pain. Indeed, it is often hurt and pain that builds and reinforces that wall. We have to trust. We have to have faith in God. We have to trust. If you've ever been on one of those um, sort of learning and development days, perhaps with work, I'm not sure that they do it these days, but at one time there was a phase where it was quite popular to do an exercise in team building where somebody, well, where people would stand in a line uh, with their backs uh, to the person behind them and they would be encouraged, the person in front, to lean back and to see how far they would allow themselves to lean back before the person behind them caught them. I don't think it really took on. But it's quite a good exercise in faith, in trust, in placing faith and trust in someone else. And this often, my brothers and sisters, is what we need to do with God. So often we struggle to do things ourselves, to sort things out ourselves, to rely on our own strength. Often only when we are in despair do we suddenly think of turning to God. Again, when we look at the life of Our Lady, we see how often she trusted. Just think of the Annunciation. 
she trusted in God. Let it be done unto me according to thy word. When she was rebuked by Christ in the temple when he was but a boy, she trusted in God. When he left their home and started his missionary travels, she trusted in God. When he started going on ever longer journeys, along treacherous roads and in the desert, she trusted in God. When people were baying for his blood, when soldiers were actively seeking him to kill him, she trusted in God. Even at his trial and his, at his scourging, she trusted in God. Even at the foot of the cross, she trusted in God. Even as she saw her son die, she trusted in God. And his last words to her, were about trust, entrusting her to the care of St John and of St John, the church, to her. And throughout the centuries since, Christians have entrusted themselves to the intercession and to the protection of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And none have been forsaken. None have been disappointed. How much do we trust in God? What is there in our lives that is comparable to what Our Lady herself went through for Jesus. Everything and nothing. Everything in the sense that our Lady, as we do, went through the whole human experience. And nothing because all our experiences are unique. None of us will experience anything, however similar in this life, in exactly the same way. Because we were made unique because we were made individuals purposefully and deliberately by God who desires to have a loving relationship with each and every one of us a special relationship an incomparable relationship a one-on-one -on -one experience more exclusive and more embracing than even the tightest of marriages. If we, my brothers and sisters, truly desire, truly desire, to live in love and in union with God, we have got to try to allow ourselves to trust in him. We have got to try to allow ourselves to share with him even our pain, even our hurt. Remember that the, the name Israel means one who wrestles with God. It sums up, as it were, 
the human relationship with the divine. We are to experience and we will experience life in much the same way as our lady did and as Job did. As Moses did and Elijah. As Joshua and Isaac and all the others. We will have ups and downs. But always remember, it is only we who have the downs. And if we do, it's because we refuse to take the ups. So often we refuse the hand of God when it is there, outstretched before us. Just as it was outstretched upon the cross willing to take the hit, willing to take the nail for us, willing to take the pain and suffering and sorrow from us. If only we would embrace the light, which is the life. If only we would receive the precious gift of Jesus into our heart. And this, my brothers and sisters, we might think of when we make our Holy Communion. We've spoken before about how precious that moment of Holy Communion is when we literally become one with him and he with us. The sacrament of God's love, the body and blood, soul and divinity of Christ. Perhaps now you might also think Christ the light of the world knocking at your heart there in the blessed sacrament there as it comes upon your tongue will you open your heart and as the host dissolves and becomes one with you we will allow his light to shine in your darkness and to burn away fear and sin and pride and all those things which prevent us which prevent you from having a truly one-on-one -on -one relationship with him based upon trust sometimes faith is used as a word to describe a form of trust but in some ways and sometimes trust is a stronger word to use than faith when it comes to belief. Trust sometimes manifests faith, manifests belief. Do you believe? Will you trust? Will you embrace his love? Because if you do, then all that we celebrate and honour and venerate about the Blessed Virgin Mary may become true for you too. Yes, you will still feel pain. Yes, you will still feel sorrow. But if you trust in him, if you live con continually aware of him, then just as our Saviour came for his mother at the end of her earthly life, so too will he come for you at the end of yours, to take you to his kingdom, where there will be no more tears, no more sorrow, no more pain, but life, light and peace for all eternity with him who is God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.
Domino Suaviscum, e con Spirito Tuo. Orde. Ave Maria, grazie per Dominus Tecum, benedicta tu mulieribus, e benedictus fructus ventis tui. Et cum spirito tu, sosum corda, habemus ad Dominum, gracias a Gaumus Domino Deo nostro, dignum et justum est, e vere dignum et justum est, e come salutare, non si vi sembrere dubi, quei gracias a Gere Domine Sancti Pater, onnipotenza et tale Deus. Et te in venerazione, beate Marie, semper veginis calutare, benedicere et predicare, Quae tu rigenitum tuum sancti spiritus um obrazione concepi, et virginitatis gloria permanente lumen eterno mundo et fudit, Iesum Christum Dominum nostrum. Equem mestatum tuum laudo d'angeli adorandum in azione strengo in potestates, ceri cerunque vetulte de beate serafim, soci sotazione concepi brand. Con qui vos in nostris voci tu temiti ubeste precavur, supplici confessione dice, Salutus, 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 
Dominus Deus Abiat, plenis unceri et terra gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis. Benedictus qui veni in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. Nobis voce peccatoribus.
ያ ሴኩላ ሴኩሎርም አሜን ሆር ስፕሬቸ ቢሰሉታሪ ቡት ማለቲ ዘቪን ስዱስ ያለ ፈማቲ አዴ ወስቲ አተናስቴሪ ፕሬይሲን ቼይ ሳንግቪ ቼይ ቱኑም ቱ ናግሬን ያድሬን ቱም ፊየር ፍሎም ፐስቱዋ ሲኩቲን ቼይ ሮፍ ኤይ ኢንታፋ አለናስቱ ካብያን ደናቢስ ካዲየ ሊሚታኛውስ ዳቪድ አኖስትራስ ዲቨኖስቲ ሚዲኑስ ዳቪታሪ ቡስናስቲስ አይደኖስ ኢንዱካስ ኢንተንሃንሲያ Ece anus ei, ece qui tolit peccato mundi. Domine non sundigmus sul intres sul tectum meum, se tentum de glebo et sen navitur anima mea. Domine non sundigmus sul intres sul tectum meum, se tentum de glebo et sen navitur anima mea. Domine non sundigmus sul intres sul tectum meum, Se tantum de verbo et sendabitur anima mea. Brothers and sisters watching Mass online and unable therefore to receive the Blessed Sacrament, we invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that Thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love Thee above all things, and I desire Thee in my soul. 
since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though thou wert already there, I embrace thee and unite myself wholly to thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Amen. Amen.
Beata Vice Maria e Vecini, che pot avere un eterni patris figli. Dominus Oviscum, e con spirito tuo. Orde, Sunt sis domini salutis nostri subsidiis, da quais mus beate Maria e sempre virginis patrocinis nos ubico e protegi, in cuius venerazione e proprio minus maestati. Per domino nostro mi Christum Cristo figlio in tu, e te in cuius da regno ad unità di Spirito Santo Deus, per la mia secula seculorum. Amen. Orde. Sancti Spiritus Domine, corda nostra mude d'infusio et suiriores intima espressioni fecunde. Quais mus Domine Deus nostri, ut quas divine tribuis participazioni catere. Tu malis non sine sabia cere periculis. Per Domino nostrum, Iaesum Christum, Filium tu, et egum vivo da regna ad unenitati Spiritus Sancti Deus. Per Romnia secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus Oviscum, et con spirito tuo, ite misa est, Deo gratias. Et nomen Domini Benedictum, ex omnum catusque in secula, auditorum nostrum, in nomine Domini, qui fece cenum et terram, benedicat vos omnipotens Deus. Pater, et filius, et Spiritus Santus. Amen. Dominus Oviscum, et con Spirito Tuo, enizium sancti Vangelis, et contum Giovannem. Gloria a Ti, mi Domine. In principio, ora et verbum, et verbum, ora et abu Deum, et Deus, ora et verbum, hoterat in principio, a tu Deum, omni prinsum factus, omni simsum factum, et nilgo factum est. In ipsum vita erati, vita erati, lux homine, per lux in tenebre, et luce, et tu in tenebre, et non comprehend Deum. Cui tuo mobisto si deve cuore avere raggi o annesi, e quelle ti testo muori, mu testo muori, vede e tu lumine, donna e stretta, mi fai ilum. Non è di dei lux, e tu testo muori, vede e tu lumine, e la lux vera, qua lumina, tu amne, ma amne, vede niente, e me non fondo. E mu nu erati, mu nu sprip su factus, e su mu nu sono con gli occhi, di propri veri che sono non riceperon. Qual qual altro mi riceperon, te emte, sfore stati, un figlio se, fieri, che sui trenti, nomine eus. Qui non ex sanguini, bus, nex volontati, panis, nex volontati, viri, se nex deo, non ti sono. Et verbum carnum factum eis, et habitavit in nobis et vilibus gloria, meus gloria in quasi nuigenite e patria, et verum gratia e veritatis. Deo gratias. A very full grace of God is with thee, blessed love our mother, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. How many for grace the Lord is with thee, blessed of our among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. How many for grace the Lord is with thee, blessed of our among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, for banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn, then, most gracious Advocate, thine eyes of mercy toward us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, who art our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on thy people who cry to thee, and by the intercession of the glorious and blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of St. Joseph, her spouse, of thy blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all thy saints, in mercy will he hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother, the Church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy Michael, Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. 
May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust out into hell Satan and all wicked spirits who wander to the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy upon us, most sacred heart of Jesus. Have mercy upon us, most sacred heart of Jesus. Have mercy upon us. May St. Catherine of Stenning pray for us, and Wilfred of York, Pray for us, St. Richard of Chichester. Pray for us, Our Lady, Our Louina of Alfriston. Pray for us, Our Lady of Walsingham. Pray for us, Our Holy Guardian Angels. Pray for us, Our Heavenly Patron Saints. Pray for us, Our Lady Queen of Heaven, all the angels and saints. Pray for us.